impressive. And one thing you also mentioned was how you've been able to stay in shape, you know, all the way through. I know you have a, you, you're very cognizant of your diet. What does that diet look like for people that are trying to look like you at one day? Well, when I came into the league, I, I ate everything. My motto was, what is a meal without dessert? <laughs> I used to eat pies and cakes and, and uh, pancakes. I mean, my diet was horrid. And, and after three or four years in the league, you start, you know, accumulating a little weight. And you go, man, I got to do something. So I had some good role models. Dick Barnett was like, he was maybe eight or nine years older than me, and he was in excellent shape. He didn't smoke. He didn't drink. So he, he helped me with uh, vitamins. I started taking vitamins. Uh, most basketball players don't eat red meat or pork, fish, chicken, turkey. So I started reading a lot of health books, going to the health stores, buying food. And it's just a, a culmination of all those years of me striving to, to, to keep my weight, to maintain my weight. Uh, I was one of the first guys to do yoga, like in 1973. No one had even heard of 1975. People didn't know what yogurt, they never, they thought I was talking yogurt, you know, they like, what flavor? <laughs> <laughs> Tell them that you were doing yoga and they would ask what flavor? Yeah, yeah, right. I go, I like yogurt. They go, what flavor? <laughs> <laughs> so I do some, at least some of that every other day, every day, an hour stretching just to, to, to get in touch with myself. You know, to sit down, sometimes with music, sometimes without music, where I just get into myself and I do my different stretches. Right in bed, I do them before I get up. Uh, my, my exercise routine is I have a, a universal machine in my apartment. I have free weights. I have a stationary bike. I have a bench. So uh, like today, you know, I'll ride the bike for 20, 30 minutes. I'll do arms, I'll do shoulders, and the next day I might do chest and back. So at least three or four times a week, I'm, I'm working out doing something. That's very, very impressive and amazing. And it, it's uh, something to aspire to, to do for as long as you have, um, without a doubt. I wanna ask, um, because you know, uh, from what I've heard back in the day, players didn't really lift weights the same way that they do today. Is that, was, was there a moment where you saw that change or, or when did weights and weightlifting really become super important for basketball players? Well, you know, we didn't have the knowledge. Our trainers weren't as educated as these trainers are today. Our trainer we used to be a baseball coach. <laughs> really? Yeah, he was just good at giving massages, man. He couldn't tape your ankle. <laughs> You hey, might tape your ankle to the table. <laughs> you know, so it was amazing. You come into the professional ranks and they have nothing, uh, no doctors or anyone working with you on how to keep your body. Like like I say, I learned from the players about vitamins, not from any manic management. And you're right. In the beginning, because of lack of education, basketball players thought it would affect their shot. You see, that's why they didn't lift weights, because you get too muscular, you know, like a, like football players, you want your, you don't want your muscles to contract. You want to keep them loose and flexible. Mm -hmm. But my problem was I was never that fast. I was never that strong. So when I went to college, we had an, uh, a guy named Doc Spackman who invented uh, isometrics. He was the inventor of the isometric exercise. So I went to him and he put me on a weight program. And I told, I mentioned to him about, you know, what I'd affect my shot. He goes, no, as long as you stretch. So once you do the weights, you just got to stretch to keep the flexibility, wow. right? And not allow your muscles to contract like that. So, so he said, no, as long as you keep your flexibility. And man, I saw so much improvement my first year. Wow from doing the weights and I, I when I came into the pros I was light years ahead of those guys they didn't know anything about weight training and you know and tithing and all of this stuff that I knew how to tape my own ankles 
Mm. You know, they had to wait on the trainer to do that. I knew how to tape my own ankles because we had to do it in college to minimize the injuries if you turn your ankle. So I came in uh, well above, well prepared. Even my coach, uh, you know, with defense, that was always my forte. I was always played uh, with coaches that stressed defense and teamwork. There were no prima donnas on the team. I played in grade school, high school, college. Everybody was treated the same on the one set of rules. So I never got cocky, you know, never thought I was better than someone else on the team. And uh, that kept me very humble. And it still does. I'm still a very, very humble player, very team-oriented player. That's important.